If you've been lounging like a sloth and your mind is feeling dusty, it's time to brush it off with your good friend Rusty. It's Rusty's Playtime. We're gonna learn and have some fun. Hi folks, my name is Liz Crooks and I'm the director at the Pentecrest Museums. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Rusty's Playtime. We're entering the third month that our museums are closed and we're really missing all of our friends, our visitors, our staff, and just hanging out and having a good time at the museum. But we want to be sure it's perfectly safe before we open our galleries and other public spaces up again. Until then, we'll keep bringing you features from the museum. If this is your first time tuning in, with me today is Baby Rusty. He's a replica of a giant ground sloth that lives in Iowa Hall. While Big Rusty is permanently at the museums, Baby Rusty is taking advantage of being out and about and visiting all of our staffers, having tons of educational fun. This month, we wanted to share with you plants. Plants are important to our ecosystem because they provide resources such as food and shelter to many of our native animals. Next, I'll pass you off to my daughter, May, who also happens to be a docent at the museums. Take it away, May. Hi guys, my name's May and I'm a docent at the Pentecrest Museums. And today I heard that we're talking about plants and gardening on today's episode of Rusty's Playtime. I'm going to talk to you about a few of my favorite plants. My first favorite plants are hostas. These are great plants because their leaves provide shade and they start to bloom big purple flowers later in the summer, which bees like to use for pollen and food. My second favorite is Coreopsis. Coreopsis is a native flower to Iowa and it's really great for our pollinators like bees and butterflies. My third favorite plant is milkweed. Milkweed is a really interesting plant. Monarch butterflies lay their eggs on the milkweed, which hatch into caterpillars, and they eat the milkweed. And then the caterpillars make their chrysalises, and they transform into butterflies, all on the milkweed. Thank you guys for coming and visiting my yard and letting me talk about my favorite plants. Next, we're going to head to Jillian's house and make a craft. seeing all the plants around your place, May. Thanks for showing us. Hi, my name's Jill, and I'm an education assistant at the Museum of Natural History. My family loves bringing plants inside. Having indoor plants helps reduce stress and helps clean the air. Another really cool thing about it is that it lets non-native species grow where they wouldn't before. Take this one for example. This is aloe, and usually it wouldn't be able to grow in Iowa because it's not hot enough. But since we keep it inside, the air is drier and warmer, so it can grow here, which is super helpful to animals like birds and insects, which eat and pollinate aloe flowers, and also to humans, because aloe leaves can help treat sunburns. My favorite way to hang up plants indoors and outdoors is with macrame plant hangers. I made these two behind me, and they're pretty easy to do. All you need is scissors, tape, a ruler, some strong string like twine or cotton, and a plant to hang. If you're interested in trying one on your own, we've put the instructions for this plant hanger on our website at mnh.uiowa.edu under the tab for Rusty's Playtime. Go check it out. Well, that's all for my house. Next, we're going to be visiting my new friend, Ray. He's the manager of the greenhouse at the top of Biology Building East in Iowa City. Today, he's going to tell us all about the greenhouse, how he takes care of it, and one of his favorite plants. Take it away, Ray. Well, the greenhouse is called a greenhouse, uh, not because the walls are green. Uh, the walls and roof are actually made out of uh, glass or plastic in some greenhouses that allows a lot of light to come in because the main purpose of the greenhouse is to grow green plants. Up here at the biology greenhouse, we have uh, about seven different rooms full of plants. We might have somewhere around 200 or more different species of plants. And 
even though right now very few people can come to the greenhouse, um, we still have to take care of those plants, and that's part of my job up here. Ray has been taking care of the greenhouse for over 10 years now. This involves coming into the greenhouse every day to water a lot of the plants by hand, to feed the fish in the pond, and so much more. Now, Ray is going to tell us about one of the greenhouse's super cool plants and how it gets fertilizer. Well, a lot of plants will get their fertilizer uh, from the soil. There are plants out there in nature that don't even have their roots in the soil, or the soil may be very low in nutrients. And for some of those plants, they've come up with an interesting way of getting their fertilizer. They catch bugs. A good example of this is, is a plant called a pitcher plant that grows in Asia. And uh, here we have one growing on the water wall. And the leaves grow out, but the end of the leaf keeps growing and forms something that looks like a tube. And the top of the tube opens up. so that there's a pitcher. What's in this kind of pitcher is rainwater, or here in the greenhouse, water from, from my water. And it fills up the pitcher, and then there's bugs in the greenhouse. And some of these bugs will go to the top of the pitcher where there are sugars secreted along the rim, and they'll start feeding on the sugar but occasionally that bug will fall, slip and fall down into the pitcher. And down in the bottom is the water. And that bug, unfortunately, will become a dead bug uh, that is fertilizer for the plant. And you can find different species of pitcher plants, not only in Asia, like the, the one I showed you, uh, but in uh, North America, South America, Australia, different species. Uh, here in Iowa, we don't have any pitcher plants, although if you go farther north, up into what's the state just north of Iowa? Minnesota. If you go to Minnesota and go north in Minnesota into the bogs, you can find a purple pitcher plant. Why do we grow these plants up here? They're for teaching the students at the university. They are for research projects, experiments that the various professors and students carry out, and they're for the enjoyment of everybody. I really look forward to, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future, uh, being able to open up the greenhouse again to the public. And we have usual business hours uh, for people to come up to the top floor of Biology Building East. If I happen to be around, I will probably talk your ears off because I love to talk about plants. So everybody take care. And uh, this is Ray from the Biology Greenhouse. Um, looking forward to when we can see you again. I'm Cindy, Director of Research Collections at the Museum of Natural History. I've been missing the dioramas at the museum. A diorama is a three-dimensional look at a natural scene inside the museum. Some of our dioramas have keys that invite you to look for plants, insects, and other animals in the habitat, in addition to the main animal feature. A habitat is the natural home of an animal or a plant or a living thing and includes things they need for food and shelter. Our fox diorama is based on a real place at the Northern Iowa home of a former museum director. The fox family, brown grass, violets, white oak tree, and bobolink bird are all part of the habitat in his yard. Take a look at different spots outside your home. What plants and animals do you see? What role do you think they play in the habitat? Hi everyone, 
this is Emily again. Today I thought I'd show you some of the vegetables that me and my family are growing in the garden. This is the garden that I planted with my family this year. We like to grow all sorts of vegetables every year. Our favorite is tomatoes, which we keep in these big cages to support it. And it grows really big tomatoes. We also like to grow peppers and green beans. Green beans like to climb, so we have these big old stakes for them to climb on. This year, we decided to grow some radishes, onions, and carrots. All sorts of vegetables this year. What sorts of plants do you like to grow in your garden? Let us know in the comments. My name is Sydney and I'm an education assistant at the Pentecrest Museums. I have an exciting experiment for you today. We're gonna to test out different environments to see how a green bean plant grows. Plants need three main ingredients to grow, sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. What happens when you limit the amount of sunlight a plant gets? Let's test it out. All right, so here's what I have for this experiment. I have a pot of soil, I have a cup of water, I have a shovel, I have my green bean seeds, and then I have three cups. Now the three cups will represent the different levels of sunlight the plant will be getting. So we'll do this one full sunlight, partial sunlight, and then absolutely no sunlight. First we're going to fill up the cups with soil, but make sure to leave a little bit of soil left behind so that we can cover up the seeds. All right, so now that we have our soil in the cups that we're gonna use, um, we are going to take some of our uh, green bean seeds um, and you are just going to put a few in each one. It doesn't have to be a lot. And then we are going to take uh, some more soil and just put it on top of that so it's, it's covered. And make sure you do this outside or you have um, something underneath, kind of like how my table is right now. It's a little dirty. Um, so if you don't want any soil in the house, feel free to do it outside. All right, so now that we have soil covering our newly planted green bean seeds, all you're going to do is just put some water in it, like discussed earlier. Um, Plants need water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide to grow, and then this creates the process of photosynthesis. All right, so now that we have these all covered, um, and then with water, um, you are going to put the cup in the respective area. Um, so this one is going to stay outside uh, near our tomato plants. This one will be in partial sunlight. I'm going to keep it by a window, uh, but not have it fully in the sun. And then this one will probably be in our cabinet with all of our other food. Um, so for these plants, it takes six to eight days to germinate, which just means that um, the plant itself doesn't come out of the seed. Um, for about six to eight days and you won't see anything kind of growing out of it until then. Hello everyone, it's Seth, one of the museum docent managers. All this talk about plants has got me itching to go outside and find some cool ones for myself. I find it super important to go outside and go on walks just to clear my head, and I love looking at plants and seeing how creatures are interacting with them as a relaxing exercise. Let's go see what we can find. So my first favorite flower that I saw on this walk are these little white daisies, and look at how the bugs are interacting with the plant. Landing on them, taking from them, it's really beautiful. I also love these really tall trees because these are homes for birds, like this one right down here. Another really pretty flower I found along my walk is this one right here. Now this is called a dame's rocket and it originally started as an ornamental house plant, but because its seeds can travel so far, it's widely found as just a wildflower around the United States and it's super pretty. All of these plants were just found by walking through my neighborhood. 
I know our museum staffers have been enjoying their nature walks too. Try to see if you can guess which staffer found these plants on their daily strolls. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Rusty's Playtime. We hope we inspired you to get out and find some cool plants in your own neighborhood. Until next time, from the entire Pentecost Museum staff, thanks for watching. It's Rusty's Playtime, we're gone.